Good morning. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme today, the wilderness challenge. The wilderness challenge. Richard Branson is the founder of Virgin Atlantic Airlines, actually Virgin Groups. Virgin Group controls over 400 companies, including Virgin Records. But back to the airline and how this airline got its start. Richard Branson was an entrepreneur or with an eye for opportunity. Opportunity is the flip side of problem stoppers. He hadn't seen his girlfriend for three weeks and he was headed to see her. He was in the airport and some of you probably have had this happen to you. For the second time in a row, they canceled the plane that was headed to British Virgin Islands. How many of you have been in the airport and had your plane canceled? It's, it's an experience, right? Richard and those there were not happy with this news. But Richard did something different. He walked to the back of the airport and gave them his credit card to charter a plane and prayed really hard that it would not bounce, it would not, it would, the credit card would go through. He borrowed a blackboard after the card went through and wrote as a joke. Virgin Airlines one way, $39 to the British Islands, and up and down the canceled flight area, he walked back and forth. After a couple of trips back and forth, he filled his charter plane. That was Virgin Atlantic's first flight. Richard Branson and everyone on his plane got a challenge when the plane was canceled. This is where we enter the biblical text today. The book of Exodus chronicles the Israelites' journey through the wilderness. It's a period marked by numerous challenges and moments of doubt. If anybody knew about challenges, it was the Israelites. In this particular passage that we just heard read so eloquently, the Israelites are grumbling because they are hungry. They remember not how bad things were, but that when they were back in Egypt, at least they had food. You mean to tell us you got us out here in the desert? What were we thinking? If only we had died. And now, here they are with empty stomachs. One of our most basic needs is for food. And here they are with no food. No food might test anyone's fate. It's hard to think about tomorrow when you're hungry in the present moment. Hard to move forward without the energy given through nutrition to do so. The lack of food limits the body's ability to do what it needs to do. Hard to trust in a God that would leave us in this predicament. The Israelites had a challenge before them. I would love to call it the wilderness challenge. The word challenge means there's a bit of friction that occurs. There's a problem that if unaddressed could get worse. There's also not an apparent solution, at least not to the majority of people. Challenges face us in this society. Global warming, fires, natural catastrophes, poverty, immigrants, deficits, Challenges face us as a city, as a community, inflation, taxes, the cost of living, crime. Challenges face us as a family, sickness, strife, conflict, wounds. And challenge face us individually on our own roads. Loneliness, depression, anxiety, fear. There are all sorts of challenges, and with challenges, we can let the gravity of that challenge pull us down. We can complain. Why did you bring me out here? We can call a friend. We can give up. We can say, I don't know what to do. We can stop trying. We can give God a piece of our mind. Every challenge, though, presents an opportunity, and that's what folks often miss. 
because the opportunity isn't always that visible. When your plane gets canceled, who thinks, oh, let me pull out my credit card? It's hiding behind the challenge that's got all of our attention. Mrs. Jackson taught in school where the math scores were always low. The support of teachers was low. The kids arrived with all sorts of problems. All of these were challenges and reasons to give to explain why the kids were not performing at the level they should be. But Mrs. Jackson added granola bars to her dress drawer for anyone that had a need, for anyone that was hungry. They didn't have to ask questions. They could just come up to her desk, grab a granola bar, go back to their seat. She noted that the kids loved music. She noted her kids loved music. And she turned a subject into fun by writing rap music that explained all of the math rules in the song. She didn't try to teach them math. She taught them the lyrics to the rap song, and the rap song explained all the rules to math. These kids got into learning and performing, and suddenly, math wasn't unattainable anymore. She reached her kids where they were instead of expecting them to be where she wanted them to be. Where is the opportunity in the challenges that faced us? Where is that opportunity? Has God brought me this far to leave me? Did God bring me to the wilderness for me to starve to death? God just got me out of an oppressive situation. I'm not where I want to be, but I ain't in Canaan land neither. I ain't at the promised land. What might God be saying to us in the wilderness experience? When Virgin Atlantic landed, a stranger walked up to Brandon and said, sharpen your skills a bit and you could be in the airline business. He took that sign and it inspired action. The next day, Richard Branson called up Boeing. He shared he wanted to start an airplane business and asked them if they had any used 747s for sale. A Boeing rep met with Richard Branson to discuss his airline dream. He wasn't sold on the name, but he was sold on Richard. He agreed to lease him one, one airplane for a year while he tried to get his business on track. A year was exactly what he needed to get his business on track. Virgin Atlantic would take on British Airway, TWA, Pan Am with their hundreds of planes. Can I share with you this morning what's been a challenge for me? Because challenges do come to us all. For two years, some of you know this, we have tried to get a daycare open. <laughs> How long does it take to open a daycare? I don't know. I haven't been in the daycare business. Our church decided we couldn't do business as usual. We couldn't just continue to operate the way the church has operated for the last couple of centuries. Look around you. And so we got excited. We got excited about opening a daycare. And just like Richard Branson didn't know a thing about flying planes, we didn't know a thing about daycare. <laughs> he saw a need and we saw an opportunity until we hit speed bumps. I don't know about you all, but in every alley, or at least the ones I've lived in, there are a whole bunch of speed bumps. And speed bumps slow us down. They almost make you stop. But then after you get over the speed bump, you continue. I want to say as a church, we've hit a lot of speed bumps trying to get a daycare open. There have been murmurings and complaining. Mm, who thought this was a good idea? We've given up a lot of space. Man, they're getting this for free. <laughs> Did I say we've hit speed bumps? We are in a wilderness on many fronts. Why? 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 Why, Lord? We can see the real problems clearly. They are glaring us in the face. Finance helps us when we get a little bit unclear, when we have to. When we're running out of steam, though, a door opens. In the past couple of weeks, that's just what happened. Doors begin to open. You see, the wilderness challenge us, but we are a people of faith, and we're called to see opportunity. Our God is a God of opportunity. About 600 people every year attempt to climb Mount Everest. Mount Everest is 29,000 feet 
above sea level and is presently identified as the tallest mountain on earth. At the top, when you get to the very top of Mount Everest, any day of the year, it's a minus 40 to minus 50 degrees. It is extremely challenging and not everyone who starts, you better believe, finishes for sure. There are all sorts of challenges needed to climb this mountain. Physical, you can imagine, proper gear, logistics, training, nutrition, weather, finances. But there's one thing that stands out in my mind the most. There are mental challenges. Climbing Mount Everest is mentally demanding. You have to be prepared to face extreme cold, altitude sickness, and just outright uncertainty. I watched a documentary the other day observing folks decked down in gear climbing this mountain. Incredible. I can only imagine the kind of endurance needed to face such an overwhelming challenge. Everyone who signs up starts this journey, but not everyone finishes. For sure, some of the reasons listed. You see, it's easy to start on course. It's easy to say, I'm going to pledge this year. It's easy to leave Egypt. It's easy to say, I'm going to help the church out. It's easy to begin. It's easy to put your name and sign up. It's easier to claim it until you get in the wilderness. Skid Row in Los Angeles is a place filled with despair. And when you get here, you really have reached a destination. People find what others do not want and they claim it as a treasure. But one thing that haunted me was the story of one man who died on Skid Row a couple of decades ago. He never made it beyond the wilderness. That's real too. Some people don't come out of the wilderness. When they examined him, they found he had a money belt on him, a treasure. But what was shocking is that this money belt had $700 in it. The man never knew the $700 was in the money belt. I thought how odd, someone starving, someone broke with $700 on them. Maybe some of us are sitting that close to our blessing, unaware, feeling like we're broke. Right beside us, around us, in us, God has made a deposit that will carry us down the road. I stopped by this morning to say, hold on to your faith. Grumbling stomach, hold on to your faith. In the wilderness, hold on to your faith. Things aren't going the way you had hoped. Hold on to your faith. Friends acting shady, hold on to your faith. You're in a new environment, hold on to your faith. You got some bad news, hold on to your faith. You got more questions than answers, hold on to your faith. It's easy to see the challenge. And someone might be saying, these folks signed up for Mount Everest, but I didn't sign up for my wilderness experience. I wouldn't choose this for myself. And the good news today is whether we choose it or not, our faith, if we really lean into it, allows us to see an opportunity. Our faith compels us to go on further. Our faith won't let us give up. Our faith says, you got this. Our faith reminds us that God's got us. God does provide. Our faith keeps us from slipping into the ditch. Beyond the wilderness is the promised land. Beyond the wilderness is a brighter day. Beyond the wilderness is the friendly sky. Beyond the wilderness is an incredible view of the world. Beyond the challenge is God's beauty. The wilderness is hard, but the wilderness is not a destination. It's a stop. It's a season. It's a visit. Anybody can see that we're declining just a tad bit. But can you see we're changing? Anybody can see we're not rich in money. But can you see we're rich in hospitality and kindness? Anybody can see that we're in the wilderness. But can you see what an awesome 
community of faith this is? Anybody can see we got a few challenges, but can you see our faith? We haven't given up yet. We invite people into community. We welcome others. We spread a message of hope. We encourage those who have fallen to get back up again. Anybody can see a problem, but it takes real faith to see beyond the problem. I love to tell this story about my friend. We were going condo shopping. She didn't have a lot of money, but she had a little bit of money, and she wanted to buy one bedroom. And we went around to a couple of places, and all I know was the last place we stopped at, it was horrible looking. The rugs were stained. The walls were jacked up. It just did not look inviting. Thumbs down for me, but it was a thumbs up for her. You know what made the difference? I was looking at how the condo looked. I was looking at what I could see right before me. But she was looking at the condo for what she could see. She was looking at the condo for what it could be. And she took that sort of ugly space and transformed that condo, got a contractor in. And we had many meals and much laughter before she became an ancestor. And we experienced community in that beautiful space because she saw what it could be. That's what faith is all about. It's seeing yourself at the top of Mount Everest. It's seeing what could be. That's what faith is all about, seeing what could be. As long as our church doors are open, we have the opportunity to be a light in critical times. Richard Branson could have done what every other passenger on the plane that got canceled did, except my play was canceled. Move on, get a meal, sleep in the airport, get a hotel, come back the next day. But he did not. He didn't accept the news. He didn't give up on his goal. He took a leap of faith. Have we forgotten what that's like? To really take a leap of faith. Pulled out that plastic. He wasn't even sure if he had enough credit, but he stepped out on faith. He had nothing to lose. He had lost before. He had been written off. He had dropped out of high school. He had tried two businesses and failed. He had been told he was headed on a path of trouble. But he had that kind of faith, and he whipped out that card anyway. He had one vision to get to his girlfriend. He saw beyond the challenges to possibility. The wilderness might find us, or we might choose to go to the wilderness. But our faith, our faith, our faith can take us beyond. Amen. Amen.